Hello everyone, Miss Gina back, coming at you this time from Texas, and we are going to talk about May 1st's AMI work for science. As always, first thing we're going to do is read our passage, which today is about centripetal force. Centripetal force occurs when an object is spinning fast. It is a force created by circular motion. It pulls a rotating object toward the center. An object moving fast in a circle is constantly being pulled towards the center of the circle by centripetal force. If you swing a heavy object like a hammer or a wrench around in a circle, centripetal force will constantly change the direction of the object. It will pull the hammer inward. It will therefore keep the hammer moving in a circular motion. However, if you stop the circular motion, the hammer will fly off in a straight line. Roller coasters doing loops or circles show this effect. Fast cars going around a corner also demonstrate centripetal motion. Centrifugal force is the force that seems to push everything toward the outside of a spinning object. It is actually a reaction to centripetal force. The hammer being swung in a circle will fly off in a straight line the moment it is go. A let go. Whoops. A centrifuge is a machine that uses both of these forces. It can separate liquids of different densities such as butter, creams, and oils. As the centrifuge spins, the heavier drops of liquid go to the outside of the machine and the lighter drops move to the inside. Scientists in labs often use centrifuges when working with blood samples. These centrifuges allow these scientists to separate two components of blood, blood cells and plasma cells. The plasma cells are heavier than the blood cells, and if they're heavier than the blood cells, where do you think they're going to go in a little vial? If you said at the bottom, you are correct. Okay, so now let's move on to our question. What did we learn? One, where would you feel you most feel the effects of centrifugal force? Centri centripetal and centrifugal, both of them. Now remember, it's asking where would you feel the most. So if you're using a centrifuge in a lab, are you going to feel anything? No. So we can mark off A. B, in a car driving straight. Well, both of these forces have to deal with moving in a circle. So no, it is not B. C, on a merry-go-round. Merry so far, this one sounds the most correct because on a merry-go-round, you, you are moving in a circle. So it's most likely that you're actually feeling the effects of centripetal and centrifugal forces. D, running down a hallway. No, nope, we're not moving circular at all. So we have found our answer of C. Now, let's look at this diagram. There are two arrows representing the forces described in the passage above. One represents centripetal force, the other represents centrifugal force. We correctly label each one. So we have A and B. B are these two arrows that look like it is pulling the car towards the center of the circle and also away from the circle, which is keeping it moving in a line. And then A, is an arrow going directly away from the car, and that's a force that's pulling the car away from the circle. So let's go back to our passage, read the definitions again of these two forces so we can figure it out. Centripetal force occurs when an object is spinning fast. It pulls a rotating object towards the center. Okay, now centrifugal force is the force that seems to push everything toward the outside of a spinning object. So based on those definitions, we can already know that A is going to be centrifugal, and B is, cent make sure you're spelling them correctly, centripetal. Why? Because B, centripetal force, is pulling the object in towards the center, whereas a, it's being pulled outwards. Now, explain your answer to number two. Make sure you are using CSRQ, complete sentence, restate the question. Okay, we can start with A is centripetal force. Because the arrow refers to the force pulling the car to the outside. 
Now, I don't have enough room here, but then you'd have another sentence. I would say B is centripetal force because the arrows refer to the force that is pulling the car towards the center. While separating blood in a centrifuge, which component would move to the outside of the machine? A, blood cells, or B, plasma cells? Oh, okay. So the question I asked you is a little bit difficult. Oh, let's go back to our passage. What just happened? Nothing. Get our highlighter out. As the centrifuge spins, the heavier drops of liquid go to the outside of the machine, and the lighter drops go to the inside. The plasma cells are heavier than the blood cells. Now, what I was talking to you about, like, it's after it's been spun, once it settles back in its vial, which is going to be on the top or the bottom. In that case, the plasma cells are going to be on the bottom. But this case, they're talking about while it's spinning, which cells are going to be going to the outside of the machine. We know the heavier drops of liquid go to the outside, and plasma cells are heavier. So, it must be B, plasma cells. And then, explain your answer. Okay, you would just say that plasma cells go to the outside of the machine, or would go, to the outside of the centrifuge, because they are heavier than blood cells. And just like that, we are done with Science's AMI work. Hope you guys all enjoyed that and that it all made sense. If you have any questions, please ask them in Google Classroom. Bye!